Hello friends. So today we will work on a different experiment and the aim of the experiment is to determine the moment of inertia of a given body with the help of another uh, auxiliary body uh, whose moment of inertia is known. By the um, thing known I uh, mean to say that the moment of inertia can be calculated from the given formula. Let's say this is the given body whose uh, moment of inertia is known to us. Means we can calculate uh, with the help of knowing the mass of this rectangular parallel pipe body uh, and uh, the dimensions or like uh, the length and the breadth uh, by this uh, slide caliper and measuring it through a slide caliper we can get the breadth and then uh, by this with the length one can measure it so uh, as we measure the length and breadth of this uh, body and uh, the mass we can uh, measure it in a spring balance or something like that then we can calculate it from the formula given in any books and now what we will do we will try to get the moment of inertia of this body with the help of the known value of this moment of inertia uh, of this rectangular body and by which we will do this is this arrangement this is an arrangement as you can see a long wear a very thin wear is hanging from a clamp uh, portion and there is a cradle this is a cradle free cradle it can oscillate and when we give a twist to this uh, cradle and first of all what we will do we will adjust the three screws at the bottom at the base uh, and uh, by adjusting this we will make it horizontal and by making it horizontal we can see that here the screw pointing out uh, is directly at the center of this cradle. So now the procedure is like this. Okay, so first of all what we will do, we will start with the free cradle and we will give a twist to this, a very small twist and now we will with the help of a stopwatch as you can see this is a stopwatch we will start counting the oscillation and we will take 30 oscillations by this start 1 this is 2 this is 3 this is 4 5 Six, like this we will count up to 30 oscillations for the free cradle and we will do it for 3 consecutive times and then we will average it out to get the time period of one total oscillation ok so like this after that if it is when it is done then what we will do we will take the this rectangular body which we have chosen to be the auxiliary body or known body then we will place it in this way so that the axis goes through the center of gravity of this body and it becomes uh, the axis 
of this rotation becomes vertical to the body axis and then we will do okay uh, before we do this the time period what we have calculated for the free cradle is denoted as t naught now what we will do the same thing with this known body in the cradle and we will give a twist again and we will start the stopwatch by measure for the measurement of 30 consecutive oscillations so let's start one one two three and four and five and six like this so and we will do this for the three consecutive times and then we will average it out and we will get the time period for one oscillation and we will denote it by T1 fine after doing this we will remove this body and we will take now the unknown body for which we have to measure the moment of inertia and again we will place the body in the same manner as the previous one so that the center of mass means the axis of rotation passes through the center of gravity and becomes vertical with the body axis and now we will do the same thing again we will give a twist and we will start counting for the 30 oscillations of this so it's like this 1 2 3 4 this is like this so after we are done we have to do it for the three consecutive times and then we will divide it by 30 to get one oscillation time period and that will be denoted by T2 so our work is more or less done now then we will put in the equation where we can derive the moment of inertia of this body let's say that is I2 and we denote the moment of inertia of this body by I1 so uh, there is a formula uh, which involves this uh, I1 and T0, T1 and T2 to determine the I2 what we will show you later and by the help of that formula we can actually derive this moment of inertia of this body and now we can verify the whether we have done it correctly or not by measuring the diameter of this uh, body because it's a cylindrical body so we have to measure the diameter first and then uh, we have to measure the length of this body and we have to measure uh, the mass of this body and we can also put this things the length and uh, the um, uh, diameter and the mass in the formula of the moment of inertia of a cylindrical body and we will get the theoretical value of this I2 and then we can compare uh, what we get experimentally by this setup with this cradle method and what we get theoretical so that will be one part of this uh, uh, experiment and the next part of this experiment is to determine the modulus of rigidity of the material of this wear okay so to do that what we have to do we have to measure the length from this point to this point by a help of an inextensible string and then we can measure it to a meter scale and then 
what we have to do? We have to measure the radius of this well. This is a very crucial thing to measure because uh, the formula by which we can derive uh, the moon rigidity modulus this involves the r to the power 4 means the fourth power of the radius so uh, in order to get a very correct value we need to have a very very careful measurement of this uh, radius throughout this length so what we will do we will take a screw gauge for that and we will measure in five different lengths and in every point at two different positions means if we take it one in this position then we have to take it one at the right angle position of the previous factor so by measuring the radius with the help of a screw gauge we will put the so by the this is uh, by the way this is the screw gauge what we were talking about this is the screw gauge and there is a circular scale here and apart from that there is a linear scale here and we can measure it like this first if we measure at let's say this point so we have to first put in this fashion Okay, for measuring screw gauge, don't push this part of the screw, rotate it by this because when the measurement is rightly taken, it will just rotate and not push it any farther. Okay, then you can measure the uh, reading from the circular scale what uh, coincides with the uh, zero reading and the linear scale reading and then by uh, the way you measure it in a screw gauge you can get the radius of this wave and then you take it vertically of the previous measurement and then you now measure a second part then you do it at a different length let's say here and you measure it and then what do you do you take perpendicular measurement and then you and like that you continue it at five different points so that you get a very average uh, good value and by the help of uh, this measurement you can uh, get a correct value nearly correct value of the rigidity modulus of this material of the hanging okay